That's right guys, I am bringing you a new and improved 2014 version of how to build a computer basic version. This is for the beginner, the guy who has no idea where to start and hopefully I can answer all of your questions today with this build. Now before you guys start asking me, no, this is not my computer. This is actually my cameraman Draxon's computer. Go ahead and say hi. Believe it or not, we're not brothers. Okay, so in this video, I'm gonna be showing you pretty much from A to Z how to build your first computer. Now, as always, if you wanna do a good job, you have to have the right tools. Now, when I'm doing a basic build, I like to use a very basic tool set. The main tool that I use is my five-in-one combo uh, screwdriver here. Actually, I think it's a four-in-one, whatever. It has got two different size screw heads on each side, both Phillips and flathead on each end. It's got a nut driver built into each side, an eight millimeter, an eight millimeter and a 10 millimeter. <clears throat> and then of course it works as a screwdriver. So this is all the tools I need in one. And then I like to use a set of wire cutters. This is for cutting zip ties and things when I'm doing my cable management. And then of course we have those zip ties. Now these are the only tools I use when I'm doing a custom build. Clearly things like Red Mist have a much wider tool set. So when you're building your first computer, you wanna make sure you have those tools readily available. If you start the job without the tools, you're not gonna get very far in the build. Okay, parts. What are we using for parts here? Well, uh, for a case here, we are using the Fractal Design Arc Mini, not the MIDI, the Mini, M-I-N-I, and this is a micro ATX uh, case here. Now for a motherboard, uh, we are actually using the MSI uh, Z87i, it's a mini ITX, not a micro ATX, it is a mini ITX board. Uh, we actually took this out of an existing mini ITX build that he had, so normally I would use an ATX board or a micro ATX board, but there's gonna be a lot of excess room in this case with this tiny little board. Now for the CPU, it's already installed, but don't worry, we will go over this. This is an Intel i5-4670K, uh, which we will be doing a little overclock on. For RAM, we have an eight gigabyte kit of Patriot Viper Extreme. This is uh, 2133 megahertz RAM. It's pretty damn fast. In fact, it's good RAM for an APU build as well. Our graphics card is a GTX 770. This is a EVGA model, I believe. I could be wrong, I don't know, it might be an Asus. Anyway, it's reference, it doesn't really matter. It's a blower design and uh, it's nice. Oh, it is an EVGA, it says it right on there. I should probably read, but it's nice. Uh, sturdy build, and it is a blower style exhaust. We're not gonna be exhausting the heat inside of the case. For the cooler, we are using the Cooler Master Sidon 120 cooler here. It is a 120 millimeter radiator here with a green LED fan on, on here, kind of sticking with the uh, green theme for NVIDIA. Uh, all in one cooling unit. It's actually a very solid unit. For the power supply, this is actually the only brand new part we're using in this build. And this is the V650 semi-modular power supply from Cooler Master. Now when it comes to power supplies, this is a very important component. You don't want to cheap out on the power supply. You may notice this is an 80 plus gold. And the reason why you want your power supply to be a nice top quality model, the best that you can really afford when it comes to rating in my opinion, is because this is what's sending all of the electricity through your system. This is also what can single-handedly kill every component in your system if the voltage regulators in this take a crap. So we are using the V650 from Cooler Master because of its solid Japanese capacitor design. And this has one of the best, if not the best, warranty on the market right now with very aggressive five-year gold guarantee. They'll pretty much cover all replacement costs, all of the labor, all of the warranty, all of the parts, and even the shipping to and from Cooler Master to get your uh, unit repaired if something goes wrong in that five year period. So five years, all costs covered, is very, very aggressive. So that is why we're going with a brand new unit in this rather than reusing our older uh, 80 plus bronze power supply. So definitely give that a look if you're building a computer and you need to have a nice quality unit. Now, when it comes to uh, parts, that's pretty much it. Oh, you know what? It actually helped if I told you guys what we were using for our hard drive. We are using the Intel 520 series 240 gigabyte SSD. We're going to probably have to put a mechanical drive in here later. I'll get it pre-wired for that so that uh, Draxon can stick his uh, a mechanical drive in here without any, you know, having to do any of the wiring because 240 gig SSD is just not going to cut it, especially when you're dealing with games like uh, Titanfall, which are over 50 gigabytes now with the expansion. So yeah, we are going with an SSD in this build. All right, so without further ado, those are the parts. Let's go ahead and start the basic how to build your first computer here with Jay's Two Cents. 
Okay, so the first thing I like to do when I'm doing my basic builds is I like to get the CPU installed so that we have nice protected CPU socket. Your CPU is gonna have a cover on it if it's brand new. Since we are reusing this motherboard, there is no cover. So it's important that we get these pins protected. Now AMD and Intel are a little bit different on the way these work because we are dealing with an Intel CPU. There are a couple notches on here you need to make sure to line up with your motherboard. If you're using AMD, there's a triangle you need to make sure it lines up with the socket. Either way, you need to refer to your manuals for your equipment to make sure that you are installing it properly. Now with Intel, we're gonna take the little arm, we're gonna force it down, push it underneath the little tab, and now your Intel CPU is installed. AMD is a little easier because the pins are located on the chip rather than inside the motherboard. So you need to be more delicate with the chip on the AMD side because the pins are exposed. Either way, we're installed now and we're gonna go ahead and move on to the next step. Now step number two for me, I like to install the RAM on the motherboard just so I don't have to do it when it's already in the case. Now, because we are dealing with a mini ITX board, we only have two slots for RAM. Most motherboards are gonna have four, some even have eight if you're dealing with like an extreme platform for Intel uh, on the X series. Now, we have two sticks of RAM here for dual channels, so we're gonna go ahead and just install them in both slots. But if you had four slots and you're only using two sticks of RAM, you're gonna to have to refer to your motherboard manual or go online if you don't have it and find out which slots you need to use for dual channel configuration. If you're using all four slots, don't worry about it, just stick them all four in there. If you put them in the wrong slots, you may accidentally activate single channel instead of dual channel, which will affect your computer's performance. So make sure you check your motherboard manual. Secondly, you need to refer to this little slot right here on the, on the actual memory itself. You'll notice that there's more pins on one side than the other. There is a corresponding slot in your motherboard right here that you're gonna to wanna to make sure it lines up with the slot on your memory. If you force it in there backwards, you're gonna damage motherboard, RAM, or both. So make sure those are lined up. Make sure your little retaining tabs on your motherboard are open. Some may have tabs on both sides. This board only has it on one side. So make sure that you're referring again to your board to make sure you're doing it properly. So go ahead and line it up in there with that groove. Slide it down. There you go. Once it clicks in, move on to the next stick. And you have just installed your very first well, presumably, your very first CPU and RAM in your motherboard. Okay, so the very next thing I like to do once I've got my motherboard set up with the CPU and RAM and safely out of the way on a surface that's not gonna damage it, I like to get the case ready for installation. Now what that usually means for me is I'm gonna remove the front filters if they're equipped, I'm gonna remove the top filter if so equipped, in this case, the fractal case does have a removable top with filter built in so that we can expose the top of the case. And we are gonna remove both the front and the back panels. Now once we've done that, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna move on to the hard drive cages. And we're gonna move, remove the box of hardware. We're gonna need this for our standoffs and whatnot. And I like to remove any hard drive cages that are not gonna be used. Now the front of this case has a 120 millimeter intake fan. It has room for another fan if you want to install one. I don't believe it's really gonna be necessary in this case because the fractal cases already have such good airflow. Removing that excess drive that we don't need, it's gonna allow us to have perfect open airflow right here for this fan, giving us unrestricted airflow for the rest of the case. Now, on this one too, you can also install your SSDs on the back. So you need to decide if you have multiple drives, are you gonna install them both back here? Are you gonna install them on the drive cages? Uh, so in this case, Drexon, where would you like your SSDs mounted? On the back hidden or in the hard drive tray there? Uh, let's put them on the back hidden. All right, so we're gonna put the SSDs on the back here, which technically means we could remove the, all of the hard drive cages for even maximum airflow if we wanted. But since I'm pretty sure he's gonna to wanna to put some mechanical drives in here, uh, if he doesn't go with another SSD, which is probably not likely because gaming on a, on a standard drive is fine for most games, uh, we're gonna leave this front cage in here take the top cage out for maximum airflow. Now that we've got the case ready to go, the next thing we want to do is get our motherboard ready to go inside the case. Now the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do when getting your motherboard ready for installation is install your motherboard standoffs. That's these guys right here. These are what your motherboard are gonna to mount to. You'll notice most cases they are not pre-mounted because every motherboard's a little different. You have ATX, Micro ATX, Mini ATX, EATX. They all have a little bit different arrangement when it comes to standoffs. So since we are gonna be using a Mini ITX, 
we're gonna go ahead and use the screw holes that are marked Mini ITX. Now, these aren't actually marked Mini ITX, I just happen to know which ones they are because they're gonna be these four right here. These, this is really gonna look kind of funny in this case, but hey, you're gonna have lots of extra airflow. Now, the cool thing about the fractal cases is they actually come with this little piece right here that slides over the top of the Mini or the standoff, which allows us to have a little bit easier way of screwing it in. It's got a Phillips screw on there. So it's a lot easier to get them started without tearing all of the uh, skin off of your fingers, which I really hate. I really hate tearing skin off my fingers. It's not a really a good time. Unless that's what you're going for. If that's what you're going for, then by all means, tear all the skin off your fingers that you want. Now, the mistake that I was about to make because I didn't have it ready to go was we need to make sure that we have our IO shield, this guy right here, inside before we put the motherboard in. Now, how do you know which way it goes? This way or this way? Well, you gotta look at your motherboard and determine uh, where it's gonna line up. So now if we take a look at our motherboard, we can see it's gonna go in this way, which means that we want to have it line up like so. So doing it like this, we can just go ahead and take our IO shield and pop it in there. Now, if you have a lower end motherboard, uh, these IO shields tend to be very, very sharp. Uh, it's probably the most common place people get cut when doing their builds is installing their IO shields. So I would highly recommend you just be careful putting it in. The edges can be very, very, very sharp and they can slice the crap out of your fingers. So you don't want that to be you. Now that we've got the IO shield in there, we're just gonna go ahead and gently slide our motherboard in, line up the holes on the IO shield, and make sure that the holes line up here for the motherboard. And then you're gonna take the included screws with your motherboard standoff and your screwdriver, and then you're going to, I like to start on the bottom most screw, it's the easiest to get to, it's gonna hold the rest of the motherboard in place. And uh, you don't wanna force it really hard. If you can't get the screw hole to line up, Something may be in the way or blocking, so check. Rule of thumb with computer hardware is if you have to force something really, really hard, chances are something is off. So you wanna double check that. You don't wanna force, because you're gonna break something. So there we go, we got that screw in and we're just gonna work our way around. If you have ATX motherboard, you're gonna have a lot more screws to deal with. Fortunately, the ITX stuff is very, very simple. Only four screws. All right, so our motherboard is installed, and typically the next thing I do from here depends on the build that I'm doing. If it's a standard size computer case, I tend to not do the cooler yet, I tend to do the power supply, but because we are gonna be using the all-in-one cooler in this build, I'm gonna go ahead and install the fan for the 120 millimeter radiator uh, back here in the top, but not the rearward most fan position. Normally you would put it right here where the rear fan is or even the rear exhaust fan or the top rear or exhaust fan. But in this one, I'm gonna go ahead and stick it a little bit forward. That way we have easier way of routing the tubes because the tubes for these tend to be really rigid on some of these all-in-one coolers. Now, one other thing that I wanna keep in mind because the next step here is also planning is you need to take a look at where all of your plugs are. And if you take a look at this, you can see Typically, your power supply, 24 pin and other connectors are gonna come in off the side this way. But for this build, it's on the top. So we're gonna have some interesting routing to do here with cables, but either way, it's, it, it'll work out well. We'll show you how to do some cable management while we're at it. All right, so as I mentioned in the previous segment, I was gonna do the cooler first, but upon realizing, like I said, that all of the plugs for this case are gonna be moving in through the top, it means that our cooler is gonna block some of our work here that we need to do first. So what we're gonna do next, is we are gonna go ahead and install the brand new power supply here from Cooler Master. We are also going to handle all of the front plugs. So we're gonna go ahead and start doing our wiring first. Now what I did on the back here was, you can see that they've already done a little bit of wire management here by zip tying these in. If I leave those as they are, they're not gonna reach. So this is why I actually have my wire cutters that I use to cut these off. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna cut off these zip ties. We're gonna get the cable plugs through the top, kind of arranged where we want them to go, and then we are going to uh, get our power supply 
plugs ready to go. So wiring is the next thing I'm going to do in this build. Now this was actually a perfect example of what I was talking about earlier, where you're going to have to check your manual if things aren't mounted or uh, you know labeled on your motherboard. Most motherboards are labeled and even color corded when it comes to the front panel connectors. This one was not, so I had to refer to the internet and I have the manual up in front of me and now I can plug in the front panel connectors based on the manual. So again, you need to refer to your manuals when it comes to this sort of stuff. So as you could see from the little video there, I was finagling this a little bit and it was a little bit tougher than I would have liked. You guys know me. I am a clean wiring fanatic. My cable management is a lot superior to most people's and I'm not trying to float my own boat. I am just a clutter. I hate clutter. Inside the case especially. So you can see here I've got the cables coming up nicely here. They're zip tied together. And what I was fighting with was running the audio cable underneath this heat sink so that it's nice and clean there. Got the antenna coming across there, the USB 3.0 here. You'll notice the USB 2.0 plug is not used because we actually have a warning sticker right on here from Fractal that says only use the USB 2.0 plugs if the 3.0 is not available on your motherboard. This one is available, so here it is right there. Now we'll be able to push that out of the way, get our uh, upper radiator fan in there when we're ready. But the next step for us now is going to be to go ahead and get the power supply in here because I still have to run our 24 pin power as well as our 8 pin EPS power here on the motherboard. And then after that I'm going to get uh, two SATA cables coming off of here because again they're up on the top where they're a little bit difficult to access. Then we'll move on to installing our cooler. Now on the back of the case here when it comes to the front panel connectors you can see I've got them routed to get together here nice and neat. The USB 3.0 I put a pretty strong bend in there so it stays flat and then we've got our rear fans and our front fan here we'll deal with all that later so we'll be mounting our SSDs there and uh, when it comes to the next step we are going to be installing our power supply as I mentioned it's still going to be tight fit up top so I don't want to put the cooler in yet and create any smaller workspace than we already have to work with so power supply installation here we come Okay, when it comes to power supply installation, there are two different ways that you can mount these power supplies, and this is going to depend entirely on your case. Now, if you're going to be installing your case on carpet, that means it's going under your desk or something, I'm going to recommend that you install the power supply with the fan pulling air in from the case. If you're going to be installing it on a desk or your mother or your case has adequate spacing for your power supply, which means it gets it up off of the bottom floor through some stilts or some feet, then you can install it either way that you want. Now this case has pretty decent, about an inch worth of height on here, but depending on how thick your carpet is, you could still potentially plug the bottom intake, which means that your power supply is getting starved of air which means it's going to get hot, it's going to lose efficiency, and it's also going to ultimately reduce the lifespan depending on how hot this power supply gets. So I like to mount the power supplies pulling in air from inside the case regardless of where they're going. As you can see, my cases are on the desk, but I like to have fresh air coming in from the front of the case that then gets exhausted out the back. So that's the way that I'm going to be installing it here using the screws that are supplied with my case for installing the power supply. So keep that in mind. If you're going to be putting the fan face down and you're going to be putting your case on carpet, there's a good likelihood that you could be choking your power supply for air if the case itself is not mounted up a little bit higher than the case floor. So please, please keep that in mind. Okay, so unfortunately, I'm going to have to flip this power supply over so that the fan is on the bottom and that these cables are closer to the back of the motherboard uh, wall or motherboard tray because unfortunately a lot of these lower end or, or lower price range power supplies I wish the cables were longer. I mean this is a micro ATX case and it doesn't really reach. 
So I can get a, about mm, five to six inches more length of these cables by flipping it over and getting this portion closer to the back wall. So that's what we're gonna go ahead and do. Now, as I mentioned earlier, guys, we are using the Sidon 120 cooler here. Looks like we actually have some bent fins, and I should actually do a video on this, on how to straighten fins back out. They're actually very, very thin pieces of, of uh, aluminum or copper, depending on the radiator that you have. But you can straighten these all back out by just using a little, I'm just using a zip tie that I cut the end off of here. And uh, as you can see, these straighten out very, very easily. But anyway, I figured while I was here and I noticed some of these are bent, probably at the time of installation the first time, might as well take care of that now because bent fins, if you have a lot of them, will affect your airflow. Now at this point, some of you guys are probably saying, but Jay, you didn't show the installation of the mounting plate or you didn't show the installation of the retaining screws or any of that. Well, the reason why I didn't do that is because all coolers are different. Even this 120 cooler is different from their Nepton 120, which is different from their Glacier 240, which is different from the Corsair 100i, the H80i, they're all different. So you need to refer to your manual and make sure that you're doing it right. That is your responsibility. This one's ready to go, so we're gonna go ahead and mount this down. Now the first thing we wanna do is I like to mount the radiator first so it's not flopping around, and then we will do our thermal paste on the CPU, and then we will go ahead and do the mounting of the block down, and we'll discuss uh, how to do your thermal paste installation at that point as well. Now this pump does use a four pin PWM header. So this is intended to be plugged into your CPU cooler header. So make sure that you guys locate that on your motherboard and plug this into the CPU cooler. So without further ado, let's get this installer or this uh, cooler installed. All right, so crisis averted. We, I couldn't figure out how I was gonna get this all to fit. Now I could have just easily taken out the five and a quarter base here, which is how you would allow a triple rat up on the top and mounted it up here and had no problem. But then I started thinking, if I had a 120 rear exhaust, a 140 exhaust, and then a 120 radiator exhaust with only one intake, we'd start having some pretty massive negative pressure issues. So as it sits right now, I'm gonna have this 120 millimeter intake here. We move, we move the green LED fan off of the radiator, put it up top as the exhaust fan, took out the 140 entirely, and we put the 120 a fractal design fan as the exhaust or pull fan on the radiator. So we no longer have a lit fan on the radiator, it's now our exhaust fan on the top. Which will be nice, it'll give us some accent lighting here inside this case. So that's how we went ahead and did it. There might still be a slight amount of negative pressure, but because of the amount of resistance the radiator uh, is going to be adding to this, it's not going to be really adding too much in terms of uh, negative pressure to the case. So we have balanced 120 intake, 120 exhaust, plus the radiator. So I think we're gonna be okay on pressure. In fact, we might be pretty neutral on pressure here, which is good for dust. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and install the cooler, show you how I like to install my thermal paste, and then uh, we'll start wrapping this bad boy up. Okay, so when it comes to thermal compound, we are using the Antec Formula 7. I've never used this. My uh, the, the owner of this PC bought it, and so we're gonna go ahead and use it. Now when it comes to applying thermal paste, there's two different methods you need to consider and it depends on what kind of CPU you're using. If you are using an Intel CPU, the processor core is actually running up and down in a rectangle right in the middle of the heat spreader. Now if you're using AMD, they are in core clusters that are on the peripheral of the actual heat spreader, so they're on the outside. So if you're using AMD, I tend to like to use an X pattern where you draw a line from corner to corner and then you go to the opposite corner to corner. That's how I do AMD installation. On Intel, I tend to either just do the P method or do the line method. In this case, I'm gonna go ahead and do the line method. It's how I like to do it here with Intel. And we are gonna be using, as I mentioned, the Antec, Antec Formula 7. Uh, it is a diamond compound. All right, so there's our line right there, right down the center of the CPU. As we tighten down our cooler, that is gonna spread out and give us nice uh, uniform cooling. When it comes to uh, tightening down your cooler, as I mentioned before, you need to consult 
your cooler's manual for the proper way of tightening it down. Every cooler is different. Now for me, I like to do things in a cross pattern, so that's the way I'm going to do it. Now because we're dealing with water cooling, this tends to have a spring-loaded screw on there, which will not allow the screw to go down tighter than what is specified for our manufacturer recommendations. So I'll just kind of get each screw started, and then I will tighten down each screw until it won't go down any farther until it hits the end of the threads. But please, for the love of God, check your cooler's manufacturer specs. That way you don't destroy your CPU because it over-tightened. Most coolers these day won't, days won't allow that to happen. But of course, I don't want you guys sending me hate mail saying you crushed your brand new CPU because Jay said tighten it all the way down. Because that's not what I said. I said check your manufacturer re retail manual. Yes, you must read manuals. And I'm not above reading a manual. I already had to do it earlier to figure out where the headers go on this motherboard. So, if you think you're too manly, manly for a manual, I bet you're also too manly to ask for directions, aren't you? All right, so now we're installed. Just kind of give it a little push on there. Everything seems to be nice and tight. That's not going anywhere. Go ahead and take your plug, whether it be for fan or pump, and then plug that into your CPU header. In our case here, we are gonna plug that into uh, CPU one. All right, so now it's starting to look like an itty bitty little computer in a big case. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take a, what looks like a massively huge graphics card for a little bit of a little motherboard, and we're going to go ahead and get this bad boy installed. Now, what you're going to want to do when it comes to removing the rear uh, panels here, or the rear little plate covers, is you pretty much are going to remove the one that is perfectly adjacent to the PCI Express port, and then the one below it if it's a dual slot card. If you have a triple slot card, you'll remove three. And if you have anything more than that, well, I've never seen a quadruple slot card, so you're probably on crack cocaine. Now, let's go ahead and make sure that the tab here for the PCI Express port is not in the up position. You want to make sure it's in the down position. One thing you also need to make sure is that the little t nipple tab things here on the back of the uh, input shield for the graphics card goes into the little slot. There's actually little grooves in most of these cases that those will slide into. And then make sure that your socket here uh, is perfectly lined up with the, uh, the graphics card. And then when this tab is down and you push it in, it'll click into place. And then you go ahead and put in your retaining screws. And there we go. World's easiest uh, installation of any computer part, in my opinion, is plugging in your graphics card. Now just take your thumb screws. And what I like to do to make sure we're not getting any sag is I like to take the rear of the card and support it with my hand as high as it will go as I tighten down the first thumb screw. That way we get a little less sag in there as we're installing it. Once you install both these screws, then your graphics card is done. Now that we've got the card installed, we need to give this thing some power. So you're going to go ahead and pull through your plugs here. Uh, in this graphics card's case, we have a 4-pin and an 8-pin PCI Express power need. So we are going to take our... Uh, this is a, what we call a 6-pin and 8-pin dovetail type of plug. You can see here it's a 6-pin, but it also has a, another little piece that you can install or just kind of slap on there that turns it into an 8-pin. In this case, we're only going to be using one of them. And so we'll just get that in place. Plug it into the 8-pin. Grab the back of the graphics card like this when you go to plug it in. That way you're not putting any undue strain on the socket on the motherboard. So that way you're not pushing and giving leverage against your socket. So support the back of the card with your hand and push it till it clicks. And you're going to repeat the same thing on the other plug. So we'll kind of push this out of the way a little bit push it down otherwise it might actually hit against the window and there you go your graphics card is now installed baby there you go baby all right so really all we have left to do now is install the hard drive which this guy wants to put in the back and we will then be pretty much ready to fire her up oh and we also have to plug in the fans that'll be important too okay so since Draxon would like to put the SSDs on the rear here 
what we're going to do is we're going to use this one over here, actually. That way all these cables aren't in the way. On the fractal case, you have to unscrew the little plate, which will make it a lot easier to install the SSD on it. And then you install the plate back on after you put the screws in. But again, this is a part in your build where you are going to have to refer to how things are installed in your case because everything is a little bit different. The SSD is now mounted on the back of the motherboard tray. So all that's left to do now is run our SATA power from our power supply back here, our SATA plug to the motherboard. And then like I mentioned, I want to make it easy for him to be able to install another motherboard or another hard drive in the future. So I'm going to run power and SATA port to the hard drive cage over here as well. I'm also going to tidy things up a little bit back here. I mean, for instance, I'm going to put a little uh, zip tie right here to keep these cables together. Because you guys know I'm a wiring freak. I cannot stand untidy wires. It's a, it's a gift and a, a curse, if you will. Because it's a gift when it comes to my PCs and it's a curse when I have to look at those that just don't care. All right, so since we are dealing with the semi-modular power supply here with the V650, uh, I'm only gonna take one of these SATA ports because I think it will work well enough to where one of these will be able to supply power to both the hard drive over here as well as coming off of the power supply, which will allow us to be able to use as little wiring as possible. So you just simply plug that in. And this is the part where you guys have to use a little common sense when it comes to wire management. Obviously, the least amount of wire showing is going to be the cleanest look. So pull it all the way through to the back. And once you get to the back here, like I mentioned, one cable is going to be more than enough. Because as you can see, power supplies from Cooler Master tend to have uh, just a, well, this one here is actually a four gang. So we've got four power or P SATA power on here. And you can see it's plenty long to reach this hard drive as well as one over here. So it's going to allow us to be even neater on the amount of cabling that we need, which is going to be very, very nice in terms of cable management. Now, when it comes to plugging in your SATA power here, uh, kind of get a close up on this, you can see that there's a little notch that comes off. Make sure you line up those notches. And another pro tip for you is you're going to want to make sure that you don't actually uh, force it in there or put too much lateral pressure on it, the plastic tabs that hold on these power uh, plugs are going to break off really, really easy. So there's our state of power. We'll just kind of tuck this in the bottom right here. I like to kind of take these and sort of bend that one like that and that like that. See, it's a little flatter. Like that. And then we can just force it right down here into the bottom. And now he's got a plug right here ready to go for his hard drive when he's ready to add a storage drive into this, which I highly recommend when possible because 240 gigs is just not going to cut. Okay, we've got our SATA power ran from the power supply here all the way to both, well, the SSD and hypothetically where the HDD is going to go. Uh, you know what's funny is there's actually three more modular plugs on this that aren't going to be needed because... Actually, I think I might have to digress a little bit. Yep, we do need to install one more of them because as you can see, uh, Fractal's still using standard four pin Molex for their little built-in fan controller here because they haven't moved this one up to the 21st century now because nobody's using those anymore. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna go ahead and run the SATA cable from the SSD on the rear to the motherboard. And then we're gonna go ahead and run the other one so that he has that for the future. So without further ado, Let's go ahead and get these cables ready to go. I say without further ado a lot. No one ever says without further a don't, because you're never going to be like, let's don't do that. Unless you're just really bad at English. Then you might use a double negatives like never not gonna, stuff like that. Perfectly acceptable English as far as I'm concerned. Well, unfortunately, standard link SATA cable is not going to reach it. Uh, motherboard or the other hard drive hypothetically so we have power ran for him unfortunately uh, you're gonna have to get a longer cable if you want to do another hard drive but at least it's not too hard to get to as you saw it's because of the non it's because of the really weird placement of the uh, of the cables here on this motherboard shame on you MSI well then again it's a mini ITX 
a very limited room to work with. I don't think it's too bad. Never run into these problem in, problems in many ITX cases because they are super small cases. So standard length cables sometimes are too long. But anyway, yeah, you're just gonna have to get yourself a longer cable, dude. But at least you have power ran down there. All right, so the next thing we're gonna go ahead and do now, we have the SSD plugged in, as you can see right here, power and SATA. So the next thing to do is clean up these wires a little bit, get our fans plugged in, and then this bad boy is ready to game. All right, so because the power cable that they used on their built-in fan controller is a four pin Molex, I have added our four pin Molex here to our power supply. Of course, it's modular, so I just grabbed it and plugged it in. And all we gotta do now is plug those two together. Now we have power for this cable. Now we've got uh, two fan headers that are exposed in the back and one is too short to make it out. It's actually up here in the drive bay. So what I'm gonna do to keep it nice and clean up front is I'm actually gonna take this three pin header and I'm gonna kinda shove it through that hole right there. Uh, pull it up through like that. That way it doesn't get seen. There's no reason to run it across the back here because that header won't make it out of the five and a quarter bay anyway. So if I turn that around, See, now I've just got the header right there. I'm gonna take the fan, make it as easy to see as you guys can because it literally does not make it out of there. The length is not the same all around. Just line up the grooves, and there. We now have our front fan is getting power. I just kind of shoved that out of the way. But you can see, you don't see any of those wires right here. So a little bit of cable management tip there for you. If you've got holes and things you can shove things through and you're not planning on bringing any five and a quarter bays in there do it shove things in the hole all right so now we'll just take the two on the back we've got our two rear fans on the back here we're just going to plug those in the same and there we go now we've got a little bit of a wiring mess here we've got to deal with because i mean as you can see here we've got a little excess slack to deal with and because all these links are a little bit different what we're gonna go ahead and do here is I like to grab them like this, fold them over on themselves, and grab a what? A zip tie. Now zip ties are like, I mean, man, it's the next best thing to slice bread. And I don't even like bread, but I really like zip ties. So, zip tie it up. And you can kind of shove it up under the little, it's like a gap, in some cases anyway, this one doesn't really have that gap. <laughs> On the bottom there's a gap. You can see I use that for the bottom cables. So we'll do the same thing here. We'll just kind of, actually because this is a flat cable, I'm just gonna kind of shove it underneath the power cables I have right there. It'll be out of the way, it saves me a zip tie, they won't get seen. And with that, there you go. The entire computer is now wired up. All of the mess is contained behind the motherboard tray. If I push that up, you won't see that through the little opening in the front there. You can see that one, but again, that can't really be helped. I mean, I guess if I cut that zip tie and brought it across, but that's not gonna really bother anybody. If you turn around and look in the front, as you can see, our computer is complete. Everything is wired up. We've got nice unobstructed airflow from the front fan feeding in the back of the graphics card and into the motherboard area. Nice unrestricted airflow for the radiator pulling air out and unobstructed airflow for the top exhaust fan to exhaust heat out of the top. So there we go, all that's left to do now is put the panels back on, fire it up, hope it turns on. Now all of the techniques that I've shown you today are just my techniques. You're gonna find people that are gonna say, I like to do this differently, or you should be doing that. By all means, come up with your own way that works for you. This is how I build computers. A computer like this, if I wasn't building a video, it would take me about an hour to build at, from the time I start to the time I'm done. And, uh, you know, when you guys are first starting, it may take you five hours. It may take you seven hours. But as you keep building and you keep tinkering, things will get more streamlined and more efficient for you. And uh, this is just a lot of fun. I love building computers. I'm sure you will too. There you go, guys. The how to build a computer for beginners video. I tried to cover as much as I could, but yet keep it as short as possible while not really leaving out any information that was really important to putting this computer together. Now, I didn't cut anything out. The computer is built entirely running behind me, as you can see, by doing the exact steps at which we recorded. There was nothing that I did in between that was, in fact, I even left in some of the problems that we encountered because if all the builds went perfectly, 
then you guys would never know what to do if you encountered some sort of a hiccup along the way. So I shared those with you as well. If you have any questions about how to build a computer, uh, definitely come and give me a message on Twitter or check out some of the other awesome tech channels out there like Austin Evans or Linus Tech Tips, um, Tech Syndicate. I mean, these guys do great videos as well on how to build PCs and how to do, you know, what it is that we do here when it comes to being a PC geek. And if this is your first time building a PC, I want to firstly welcome you to the master race and I hope that you'll throw your consoles in the trash. And remember, the Titan Z is nothing but one big fat ass rip off on the part of NVIDIA. That's what this whole point of this video was. Titan Z sucks. All right, guys, I'm gonna get on out of here. Hopefully this video has helped you. Share it with someone you think it will help. And as always, I will see you in my next video.